welcome back from Germany. Hi, Greg. Hi, hey, look, I'm sorry to catch you right as you walk in the door, but it's time for... Five Minutes with Ingo. Five Minutes with Ingo. Oh, let's go. Fantastic. We're talking about knife base now, um, which is a really good learning scheme, a machine learning oh. scheme. It's theory, actually one of the best. So whiteboard number two, please help me here. I will have a look, quick look here at this data set. This is a very famous data set. It's called the weather data or golf data. Well, funny is that, huh? I keep playing. I don't think the heavy stuff's gonna come down for quite a while. You're right. Almost as favor, famous as the iris data set. So we have a couple of columns here, outlook, temperature, humidity, windy, and then this is the label. This is what we want to predict. The question, if you are going to play golf, yes or no. So that's the data set, and what is Naive Bayes now doing with this data? So there's a different way to look at this data. You could just look at every single column here, like outlook, and for the three potential or possible values, sunny, outcast, and rainy, you can create a count for all combinations with the label equals to yes mm -hmm. versus equals to no. Okay. So for example, outlook equals to sunny. Let's start with this row here. Unbelievable. Thank you very little. And this is a combination with yes. If you find a case like this, you just increase this count here by one. Got it. Okay. So that's the basic idea how you can create this table here. It's really just one data scan and you create all the counts. So now the big question is, after you did this, how can you use this to create a prediction for new cases? Okay, so that's for example, whiteboard number two, can you please give me a bit of space here? All right, thanks. So um, let's look for example at a sunny day, mm -hmm. it's cool, mm -hmm. the high humidity, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's also windy. Okay. So now, are we going to play golf, yes or no? You're playing golf and you're going to like it. So, first of all, we can have a look at the question, are we going to play golf? Yes. So in this case, we look at all those probabilities. How do you get those probabilities? Well, you just take the counts. In this case, we have two combinations out of the nine possible combinations here. So you divide this by the number or the sum of this column here. Mm -hmm. So that's two over nine, two ninth as a probability for a sunny day where you're going to play golf. Yep. And then you do the same thing for all the other yes combinations. Mm -hmm. okay. And finally, you also have the, the probability for yes without knowing anything about the weather situation. So this now can be used to create the likelihood, which is not exactly the same thing as a probability, the likelihood for yes. Yes, sir. By just multiplying those probabilities. So we take 2 ninth multiplied with 3 ninth, and then another one, another one, and then multiply it with 9 divided by 14 for the overall probability. So, and that's, uh, that's something we can easily do in our head, that's 0 0.0053. Okay, so that's the likelihood for yes. And now we can do the same thing also for no. So in this case, we just look at the other combinations here. So now we take those probabilities, and we just multiply those up. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood for now... Uh, no. ...is 3 fifth multiplied with 1 fifth. Let's speed up a bit here. 4 fifth, 3 fifth. And finally, 5 divided by 14. And that is a little bit higher. That's actually 0. Point 0206. Right. So if I only have those two numbers, my decision would be clear. The likelihood for no is higher, so the probability for no is higher. By the way, if you want to transform this into probabilities, you can just divide those two numbers by the sum of the two numbers, and then you end up with like 30% probability versus 70% uh, probability. So this is the basic idea of knife base and how to use it for creating predictions. So what? So what? So let's dance. How is this really working? Well, it's following something we call the base rule. The base rule is basically the probability for a class, given those attribute values here, can be calculated by the probability for those values given a certain class, uh -huh. multiplied with the probability for this class, divided by the probability for those values. So we can ignore this part, that's always constant. We see this part here already. This is just the, 
the final probability here, we have been using our formula before, and this probability for the values given a certain class, those are the probabilities that are multiplied here. And that's exactly why this whole algorithm is called naive base, because this is a very naive assumption that we can just multiply all those values to get to this probability. That's actually something which is only true if those attributes are independent of each other. Usually not the case in practice, but I still recommend to use this because it's very efficient, and if this is more or less independent, it can deliver really good results. So it's a great algorithm to start with, and I recommend to use it first. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Ingo. And this has been your five minutes with Ingo. <sighs> oh my gosh, it's late. Where's data scientist number seven? Hello? Huh. He must have been gone. What? What are you doing there? Are you still eating the bushes? Ah. Wait! Hey! You have work to do! Scientists. Stop thinking. Let things happen and be the ball.